بسم الله والحمد والصلاة على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This evening we discuss that personality who was the first to be given the title Amir al Mu'minin. We look at the life of none other than Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab رضي الله عنه. What we know about his life is that he was born nine years after the event which is known as Amul Fil, the year when the elephants were marched upon the Baytullah by the governor of Yemen by the name of Abraha. And that was a major event and people used that to date the time. So Umar was born nine years after that event. Umar grew up in Makkatul Mukarramah and in the initial days he was amongst those who did not respond immediately to the deen of Islam. Until Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the dua Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al-Umarain. That, O oh Allah, you give honor to the deen of Islam by one of the two Umars, Umar bin Khattab, Umar bin Hisham, which is Abu Jahl. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua and the Sahaba knew that this dua would become a reality. The incident is narrated in many of the books that one day Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu set out with the intention of uh, assassinating the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he met some of his family member on the path. And when this person asked him, where are you going? He said, I'm going to kill Muhammad. This person who has brought a new deen, a new religion to us. And the family member that he met said to him, that why are you concerned with that when more strange than that is that people from your family have accepted his message. Immediately he hastened towards his own home and as he was coming close, his sister with her husband and Sayyidina Khabbab radiallahu anhu were involved in the lesson of the Noble Quran. When Sayyidina Khabbab radiallahu anhu heard Sayyidina Umar coming, he hid away. And when Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu entered the room, he asked them what they were doing, but they had already hid the scriptures away. Nevertheless, on his insistence, he, they took it out. And when he wanted to touch it, they said, you cannot, you are not pure. And at that time, the verses that was being recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verily, I am Allah, there is no deity except me. Establish salah for my remembrance. And this one verse struck Sayyidina Umar in such a way that his heart changed. In fact, it was after this that he then went to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he came to the door of the home where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Mount Sufa, uh, in Mount Safa, then uh, uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Sayyidina Hamza to see who was at the door. And when he informed that it was Sayyidina Umar, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already gave the glad tidings that Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu would accept Islam. It is said that when Sayyidina Umar accepted Islam, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrates and he says, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, ahlu sama, that the, the angels in the heavens were rejoicing the day when Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu had accepted Islam. To such an extent that the Sahaba says that in Tasaf al Qawm, that when Sayyidina Umar had accepted Islam, it was as though now there was half Muslim and half non Muslim. Up until this point, we were in the minority. No one dared go to the Kaaba and perform salah in open. But once Sayyidina Umar had accepted Islam, then the Muslimin could go in their groups and go and accept, uh, go and perform the salah in the Baytullah without any fear of any, uh, any uh, interference from the non Muslimin. It is said that when the time of the Hijrah had come, and at that point, Nabi Sallallahu had allowed certain individuals like Mus'ab radiallahu anhu to continue to Medina tul Munawwara. And there were those who left secretly and there were those who feared harm from the Quraysh. But when Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu intended to leave, he went to the Baytullah. He made tawaf seven times around. He performed his salah at the Maqam Ibrahim. 
And then he went in the gathering of the kuffar and he said, anyone who wants to leave his mother behind, anyone who wants his children to be orphaned, anyone who wants his wife to be hidden, widowed, then meet me on the other side of this mountain. I'm leaving here and if you have any problem, come meet me there. And lo and behold, there was no one to meet him over there. That was the might of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, that his words struck awe into the hearts of the enemy. He continued to be alongside Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in all the major battles. In the battle of Uhud, when there were certain groupings from the Sahaba who were temporarily fled, then at that moment Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu remained steadfast and firm alongside Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He remained loyal to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout his life. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every Nabi has two advisors in the heavens and two advisors on the earth. My two advisors in the heavens are Sayyidina Jibreel and Sayyidina Mikail. And my two advisors on earth are none other than Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab. He continued to dedicate himself to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he remained loyal with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam till the end of the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Throughout his life, there were certain virtues that Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu enjoyed. When he had advised Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of Badr, the O Nabi of Allah, I suggest that we chop the necks off of these kuffar so that we show them that we have no love, that we show Allah that we have no love for the mushrikeen in our hearts. And other Sahaba had given an other opinion in this matter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed verses, وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَن يَكُونَ لَوْ أَسْرَى حَتَّى يُثْخِنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah revealed verses conforming with the opinion of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Umar comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, O oh, Nabi of Allah, there are different types of people that come to your homes and your wives are in your homes. You should erect a parda, a hijab in your home. And it was at that point that the verses of hijab were revealed. And this is what is termed as the muwafaqat of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. The confirmation that when he had given an opinion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent revelation that confirmed his opinion. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu had said to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi of Allah, let us perform salah at the maqam Ibrahim. And it was at that point that the verses were revealed, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى And perform salah at that point. Part of what the virtue that Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu enjoyed was that Nabi Sallallahu had made dua for his acceptance of the deen of Islam. And also Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was the first person who pledged his allegiance to Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu after the demise of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he then gets the reward of all those who had take it, followed him in this great step that had brought unity and conformity to the deen of Islam. There's an amazing incident that when the Muslim army had laid siege on Jerusalem and they were not making headway in entering the city. And at that point, one of the leaders of the Christians had suggested that you call your leader, let him come to our city and we'll hand over the keys. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu then spoke to those around him and he took counsel from them. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu was in favor that Sayyidina Umar should remain behind. And Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, go ahead and go meet them and there will be goodness in that. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu undertakes this journey with no entourage but only his own slave. And it is said that there were times when he was on the, on the camel and there were times when his slave was mounting the camel. And as he came towards the city, one of the army generals of the Muslims said that, Oh, Amir al muminin you're looking a bit disheveled. He had just crossed a small path, so he had taken off his shoes. He had his clothing that had 16 patches on it. And he had his shoes on his back, and he was walking. So they said, Oh, Amir al muminin why don't you put on some nice clothing so that the enemies, the leaders from the enemies, do not look down upon us. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu for a moment thought that maybe I should do that. And he had just put on the clothes and then something struck him and he took it off and he said, Nahnu qawmun a'azzan Allahu bil Islam. That we are such a people, Allah has granted us honor because of our deen of Islam. And if we seek honor in anything else, Allah will disgrace us. And those are words that we need to reflect on at all times when we hold fast onto the deen of Islam. 
Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was martyred in Medina Tul Munawwara. He always made the dua, Allahumma rzuqni shahadatan fi sabirik, waj'al mawti bi baladi rasulik. That oh Allah grant me martyrdom in your path, but also make my death in the city of your messenger. And Allah had willed that he gained both. Uh, there, was a, uh, there was a Persian slave who Mughira bin Shu'bah had brought to Medina and he was very skilled and he had to pay a certain amount of tax. And he wasn't happy with the amount of tax that was stipulated for him by Sayyidina Umar. And Sayyidina Umar was in the process of negotiating the price. However, this individual, this slave could not wait. And one day after the Fajr Salah, he then went and he struck and he stabbed Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu in the stomach. And that resulted in a fatal wound, which eventually led to his death. But in those moments, while he was like that, where his stomach was open and whatever he was consuming was coming out, and one of the companions who were with him said that Salah time has come, said, Now Umar is unconscious. The best way to get him conscious is to tell him it is Salah time. And while he was in that unconscious state, the companion came and said, O oh, Amirul Mu'mineen, it is time for Salah. And with that, he gained his conscience and he said, if it's time for Salah, then Salah will be, have to be performed. That was the importance of Salah that we learned from the life of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, that even in those moments, he was concerned about his Salah. He was then buried alongside Sayyidina Abu Bakr and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was the privilege that Allah had granted him. Allah had honored him. What we learned from throughout his life is that he had great fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He always questioned himself when he would wander through the streets of Medina. He would say, Oh Umar, even if a dog had to die on the banks of the Euphrates, you will be answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us love for all the Sahaba and grant us the understanding of their true position. Muhammad <laughs> وَعَلَى